Hey guys, I wanted to do a video on what kind of filter should I use or um, what kind of filter do I need. Um, the first thing I want to do is talk about the types of filters quickly. The first kind that you'll see um, over here I'm going to post is a melt blown cartridge filter. It's just the <clears throat> comes in a two inch by nine and a half inch or standard whole house filter and it's for sediment for sand uh, sediment and sand are kind of the same for the most part because I'll get to the why I say that um, in a few minutes the next thing though and the melt blown cartridges are they're lightweight they're um, more inexpensive than the others is the one that I prefer to use because they work <laughs> Then the next one um, is the string filter, and it's just woven string wrapped around a little tube, and it stops sediment as well. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. The first two filters I mentioned, the melt blown and the string filter, they are throwaway. You just throw them away when they get when the um, pressure decreases. They get full of sand and sediment, and you just throw them away. The third one is the pleated cartridge, and it's kind of made of like a plastic. So you can, once you if your um, pressure slows down or decreases, take it outside, wash it out from the inside out, and wash all the sand out, and then you could use it again. So you can kind of get two uses out of it. Just depends on your water and the pressure and stuff because sometimes they'll kind of break down as well. Like I said, my favorite is the Melt Blown. Never had a problem with it and it does what it's supposed to do plus it's more inexpensive for the, the user. Um, the next one is uh, what's most common and I've got it here with me. It's a carbon filter. You, um, they also call them the TNO filter, taste and odor. This will work for sediment, but it's primarily designed for uh, chlorine, and it will also take out some leads. This is a real inexpensive one. There are different kinds. This is like a carbon material, so it's still going to stop the odor if you're on a well or the chlorine if you're on city water, but um, you really want a, what they, what's called a GAC granular activated carbon. It's in a hard cartridge filter. And You can shake it and you can hear it rattle around inside there. Or you want a carbon block, which is carbon that's been compressed like a brick, and um, which is the best as far as carbon goes because it helps takes out lead and some of your heavy metals where this is just a kind of a basic, depending on your water usage, you probably get to replace it every month or so. So there is a big difference. Um, but I'll list all of them in the description below so you can see and with and I'll just also show you pictures as well as so you can see what you're looking at. Now um, it's back to the sediment filters. If you're on city water you really don't have sediment. You're gonna pick up some stuff from the lines um, but like if your water saver and your faucet gets plugged up full of little granules this is the thing to keep in mind. If they're kind of rectangular or squarish then it's probably not sediment, it's probably hard water. Um, the interesting thing is your water can be relatively soft, five grains per gallon hard, but the chlorine helps oxidize it or make it, or precipitate it, if you will, to come out in the water and then it, you, get, you see the little stuff on your faucet ends and stuff like that. There's a lot of interesting things that happen to our water, especially when we start injecting chlorine or and or fluoride and chloramines and whatnot. So um, if you're on city water you don't really need a sediment filter for the most part because it all settles out at the um, station, the pump station where it's pumped from, whether it's a well or it's lake water. Usually lake water or river water is soft. The sediment settles out in the tank where they chlorinate it and then it gets put in the system. So you might pick up some stuff in the pipeline because of what the chlorine's done to the insides of the pipes, depending on the types of um, delivery system you have. But you don't really need a sediment filter if you're on city water, you need a chlorine filter. And you can do a couple of different things. You can do a whole house system 
and um, it stops all the chlorine that goes into your house. Perhaps I'll post a, a link to that as well. And I've done a couple of those in my day, and I think they're great, especially if your skin is always dry. It's not necessarily the water, but what's in the water, the chlorine. It will dry out your skin, just like if you go swimming a lot, the chlorine in the pool will dry out your skin. Most people think, think that it's the sun, um, but it's really the chlorine in the water. So that's something to think about. Plus, the water's not safe to drink as far as chlorine goes. It's safe to drink because the chlorine kills bacteria, but then you're putting chlorine in your body, and that's a whole nother deal, and I'm anti-chlorine as far as ingesting it into our bodies because it's caustic, okay? Getting off my bandwagon. So if you live in the city, you can either use one of these little small cartridges um, that I showed you, which you want a GAC or you want a carbon block, um, but I really recommend a whole house uh, carbon filter, which is about three and a half, four feet tall, and it's got carbon in there, and it will last you a few years, and it's easy to replace the um, carbon on the inside, and not that expensive either, but uh, you can look into that if you like, and I'll, like I said, I'll probably post a link down below so you can see what it looks like, as well as a picture. Now, if you're on well water, you may sometimes need a sediment filter, um, and any of the three I mentioned you can use. Like I said, I prefer the Melt Blum because they're more inexpensive than the other two, and they're just as effective. You put it after your pressure tank, not before your pressure tank, okay? Because if it's before your pressure tank, you're building up, you're creating more head pressure on your well pump than what you need to, and you could burn out your pump a lot sooner. In this case, you'll wear out the pump in because it's got this head pressure and it's pushing them colors against one another and wearing them out. So always put your filters after your pressure tank. And if um, you're getting some sediment, you really know if it's sediment or if it's hardness breaking loose from inside your pipes and getting into your water savers and stuff. The way you can really tell is if you go in the back of your toilet tank, lift, take off the lid and look inside there in the bottom and you'll see some silt or some very, very uh, fine sand, okay? For the most part, you won't get rid of that unless you have a whole house filter because um, that's a completely different animal in itself, a, a sediment filter for um, that kind of sand. But if you have some sand in there, in your system, in your house, and then coming through your lines, and you use just like the little cartridge, that's fine. If it's getting plugged up real fast, then you want to go to that big giant whole house um, filtration system they work I put them on lakes I put them on homes where they have a well and they have tons of sand and I mean tons of sand um, it stops the sand and um, you get clean filtered water in the house no sand in it and it works real well and if I can find one I'll post a link down below as well otherwise um, I might have to send you to somebody to get one and I was, almost want to say, you can get a hold of me and I can send you one, but I'm not there yet, okay? So, uh, anyways, that's you want to make sure that it's a sediment filter that you need and not a water softener. Because if things are breaking loose and getting in your water saver, the things that are breaking loose is the hardness in the water that's inside your pipes that's breaking loose and plugging up your water saver, okay? And I'll put in the description below what you need as far as getting a water test kit so you can say hey okay my water is hard then I need a water softener and I I'm telling you once you get a water softener and you get the water soft eats all that stuff outside your pipes that problem will go away now if you have an odor in your well water then it's gonna be one of two things it's gonna be hydrogen sulfide or it's gonna be iron bacteria so what you want to do is disinfect your well by on the top of your well head there's a little blue gray or black cap, a square one, you unscrew it, pour your bleach in there, you could put a half a gallon if you like, you can put a whole gallon if you want, then run water out of the hose into that hole to wash all that water, I mean all that chlorine down off your pipes, okay, and into the well, and then when you can smell that chlorine in your hose, then you turn it off, you go in the house, open up all your faucets, and um, until you smell chlorine in there, in every single faucet, 
it, it's going to take a while to get in your hot water tank, uh, hot water lines, but turn on your hot water lines, let some water run, get some hot water, I mean cl uh, chlorinated water into your water heater, and you'll disinfect it that way. Even your outside hose bibs do the same thing. That way you get chlorine in every single line. You can let it sit for an hour. It'll disinfect whatever's in there, whether it's hydrogen sulfide or iron bacteria um, that could be growing in your lines and creating the odor. Then you want to get a carbon filter. The granular activated is best. The carbon block is really, for the most part, you want to stop chlorine. So like you have a chlorine injection pump into your system, then use the carbon block to take care of the chlorine there. But the um, GAC granular activated um, carbon filter is really what you want because that'll stop the odor. Now if it's iron, it won't stop the iron, but it'll stop the iron odor. So um, if really what you need is if you have iron, then get yourself an iron filter. And I've got um, in one of my videos, I think it says what's the best iron filter. So you can um, go to that video. I think there's a link there for that. Okay, But you don't want to get uh, confused with sand or sediment and hardness because nine times out of ten it's just a water softener that folks need and when you call a guy and he says it's going to cost you five thousand dollars you're like ah! <clears throat> so most people go stick a filter on and they still have the same problem get the test strips or the test kit and um, test your water make sure that it's not hard if it's soft then you probably do have a sediment problem but if it's um, hard then it's I'm telling you almost 10 99.999 it's going to be you need a water softener okay and so if you're on a city water just to rehash you don't really need a sediment filter you need a carbon filter and a granular activated carbon is the best or you can just put them under your sink you can buy those systems put under your sink and then you don't get chlorinated water out of your um, faucet you get unchlorinated water out of your faucet or you can get a reverse osmosis system if you're on well water you're going to have sediment or you're going to have um, hydrogen sulfide or iron bacteria which creates the odor and the carbon filter will stop that the melt blown will stop your sediment or the string filter or the plated filter okay so I'm going to put some pictures out there and label them so you can see what they are and I'll put links at the bottom so you know what they are. I hope this helped. I know it's kind of all over the place because it's almost two different videos. And um, maybe I'll make another video on what's the best uh, whole house filter for my house. Or how do I get rid of hydrogen sulfide or how do I get rid of iron and their odors or something like that. I'll come up with a title and uh, do a video on that for you. Okay. And... Um, as always, please, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I usually get them, get notifications now right away, and I try and answer right away because um, I know it gets frustrating when you ask a question. you got to wait a week or a month. In some cases, I've had people, it was just crazy. I'm sorry. But I try and answer right away. And um, So don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to share. You can, down there where it says share, and click that and click the link and put it on your Facebook page help your friends if you're living in an area that's got problematic water and help um, get your friends educated too okay thank you I really appreciate you guys and if you haven't subscribed and you're watching the video please hit subscribe so when I make another video it may or may not be pertinent to you but at least if it, uh, you can look at the title and say oh yeah I need to look at that then you'll um, you'll be kept up to date on some of the other videos I make alright thank you guys have a great day